Today we're going to be looking at another video by the Alternate History Hub. Specifically, what if the Chernobyl disaster never happened? By the way, if you haven't seen my reaction to what if Chernobyl was worse, I'll pin that one down in the comments. So here we're going the opposite direction. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. The atomic age brought new possibilities. Nuclear energy was now able to be harnessed to create weapons of mass destruction and as alternative energy. The so it's interesting that Atomic Age is now looked at as a historical period, whereas a period that we are currently actively still using nuclear power right now. But that has gone and given rise to the Information Age. Yeah, we are kind of past what a lot, where a lot of people really looked up to nuclear power. And I'd like to bring some of that back. Union constructed nuclear power plants across their territories in an effort for clean energy and power, and also perhaps for some bombs as well. However... <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true um especially early uh first generation nuclear power plants were let's create clean safe sustainable reliable electricity but at the same time we can also make some bombs on the side now 1986 chernobyl was pretty late for that with all its flaws chernobyl was technically a more modern design than all these than the first generation of nuclear power plants. Older ones such as Dresden 1 in the US or Shipping Port in the UK. But Chernobyl was actually a second generation one with some of the still mindset of the previous generation. Effort exploded in 1986 in Ukraine. It did. A catastrophic meltdown of a nuclear reactor. <laughs> this drawing is pretty silly. <laughs> Look at these little swirly cute little atoms floating off. <laughs> No, that was this was by far the worst um, nuclear power disaster in terms of fatalities. Although there were other instances where a comparable amount of dose strictly measured in how many curies released, such as the Kitchen disaster where a river was quite badly contaminated, also in the Soviet Union. But Chernobyl was definitely the overall worst. Lethal radiation into the surrounding area. The incident led to entire towns being evacuated, never to return. Today, the Chernobyl disaster has become symbolic with the bleak effects of radiation, what man can do to the environment, and the closest glimpse to a nuclear apocalypse. Now this- Which really says something, considering this is like the least apocalyptic apocalypse ever, in that very few people actually died. A lot of people think way more than 31 being the official death toll and 50 being the UN estimate. The ultra-conservative UN estimate that uses the linear no-threshold model, which is another way of saying every teeny tiny little bit of radioactive dose you get increases your risk of cancer, assumes 4,000, and that 4,000 includes people that are still alive today and a few people that haven't been born yet. But compared to, I don't know, events like the Black Death, this isn't very apocalyptic. I don't mean to downplay it too much. This was by far the worst nuclear disaster, but saying it, calling it an apocalypse or saying it's the closest thing to apocalypse either says we are this far away from an apocalypse or the word apocalypse is overrated. The question, what would the world be like if the Chernobyl disaster never happened? Would atomic energy be perceived differently in this alternate timeline? Could there be Probably. other political and historical effects as well? But first, some context for those unfamiliar with the Chernobyl disaster. What Let's is see how he does. This Chernobyl was actually called the VI Lenin nuclear power station located near the city of Chernobyl. Today, the station is now simply known as the Chernobyl plant. In Soviet times, it was constructed and directly under the jurisdiction of the Moscow government itself. The plant was located in the city of Pripyat, which was constructed in 1970 by the Soviet government to house plant workers. On April 26th, Yep, like you said, the entire economy of that city basically revolved around the plant. 1986, the lives of the citizens of Chernobyl, Pripyat, and countless others would be changed forever. In nuclear reactor 4, a routine safety test, ironic I know, was performed horribly wrong. Yeah, that, that test was anything but routine. It was a special test that they deviated from said testing procedure due to an absurd amount of pressure from from their leadership. I want to point out in a comment um, that I got in a previous Chernobyl video, thanks again for leaving these comments, about saying it was more than just the operator's fault as to what caused this accident. 100% uh, true. 
I may have said operator, but I wasn't entirely clear. So, yes, the operators, the backshift operators that did this test at night, and keep in mind the risk of any accident goes up when you have backshift personnel that didn't necessarily get the best turnover of all time. I mean, they were certainly at fault, but it certainly wasn't just their fault. It was a design problem of the, I've mentioned in several of my videos, with the control rods that are graphite tipped being the equivalent of when you slam on the brakes, it accelerates you for, for a little bit before it actually engages the brakes. When I say the operator, I mean everyone involved, the site's leadership team, the leadership team above that, for not fostering an effective nuclear safety culture, and where cutting corners to finish a test expediently because there were schedule pressures for ensuring that this plant was up and running in all of its prerequisites to large-scale, I was going to say commercial operation, but I mean this is the Soviet Union we're talking about, but it would have been the equivalent of commercial operation if this plant was in the United States. But yes, thank you for that comment. It was not just the uh, the personnel with their hands on the switch or the personnel giving orders to the guy with the hand on the switch. It was a much, much bigger problem. Most safety protocols were bypassed, leading to the core itself exploding, destroying the roof, and sending graphite from the reactor across the area. The I know I go into way more detail when, when I reviewed the uh, HBO Chernobyl series, but I think it's important to bring up again the core exploded due to an, a massive power surge brought on by the reactor being in an unstable, low-power condition and a sudden influx of positive reactivity by bad operations and bad design. Said sources of reactivity would be impossible in a current nuclear power plant, and there are so many more engineering hard interlocked controls as well as administrative controls on top of that to prevent you from getting anywhere remotely close to that. And the actual explosion was a steam explosion by the power surge. This wasn't like a nuclear bomb going off. I guess you could say it wasn't a nuclear bomb in like an atomic bomb or an H-bomb. You could say it was a nuclear comma bomb and that <laughs> it was brought on by a nuclear reaction but not in the same way that, a, that an atomic bomb works. Can be for numerous reasons. The flawed design of the reactor and human error all played a part. Firefighters were sent in to deal with the fires caused by the explosion, and they stepped into a radioactive hotspot. The effects were immediate. They could feel the pain on their skin, their bodies facing the full force of nuclear radiation and all 31 would die from radiation sickness just months after. Then the day, the people of Pripyat began feeling that something wasn't right as well. Vomiting, dizziness were all symptoms beginning to be felt as radiation fell down upon them. Acute radiation poisoning, yeah, it's a, it's a horrific way to go. Possible to survive it, sure, but either way, still horrific even for the people that survive. Today, evacuation orders were given to the surrounding area, including Pripyat. Buses were driven to move people to areas outside the immediate radiation zone. Communist Party messages blared from speakers in the town, telling the civilians to leave their belongings. Nobody ever returned to get them. Reports of the actual accident and evacuation of an entire city were not made public until two days after the disaster. One interesting thing about this being the Soviet Union, I mean, they were probably would have had an easier time evacuating people than compared to a country out in the West, especially a country like the United States, trying to enforce evacuations. But at the se so that part of the culture is in getting people to evacuate. There would have been less resistance there. However, it was overall a management and cultural issue that led to a severe lapse in nuclear safety for both operations and design that brought them to this issue to begin with. So, not a favorable trade-off. And then they were downplayed. The radiation was carried from the plume. Yeah, that, that's the other thing, they downplay it. Other than just Pripyat and Chernobyl. Winds carried the fallout where it eventually landed in areas of Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. Radiation traveled from across the entire globe. Forests died nearby as radiation drifted from the sky and killed off the plants. As the so, drifted the entire globe. I mean, that's true because wind does eventually travel around the globe, but just one bit of added context. It's going to get super diluted and diffuse and widespread 
to the point where there's not really going to be elevated dose rates on, say, the other side of the world, for instance. During emergency planning drills, one of the first things that is monitored is the wind. So you can tell which zones where there are, there are populations in that are relatively close to the plant should be evacuated, should be sheltered in place. And a lot of that is dependent on the wind direction for the emergency director to recommend to the local authorities if they want to evacuate or not. And that's only at the highest level of emergency when you actually have a radioactive release. And with Chernobyl, oh boy, they had the worst radioactive release. The situation deteriorated, emergency workers stopped the risk of a steam explosion, and liquidators picked up the highly radioactive debris now littering the entire site. To prevent so the whole steam explosion, um, the steam explosion is what tore the reactors apart. I think what they're referring to was the chance of secondary steam explosions. But I just do want to emphasize that steam most certainly caused the explosion that tore the reactor to pieces. More radiation from contaminating the environment, Soviet engineers went to work. After five months, a massive concrete and steel sarcophagus covered the exploded reactor, enclosing radioactive debris and material inside. This structure has helped prevent any radiation from further doing harm. Yet in many areas, the environment was a shadow of its former self. So what would this alternate- I mean, it was, but a lot of it was perceived. A lot of the flora and fauna, fauna have recovered in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. I want to emphasize exclusion zone just means it's a radiological controlled area. It doesn't mean if you go in there, something horrible is going to happen to you. At least from radiation. It is kind of the, the Wild West, though, in terms of the lack of people and like it's been reclaimed by the environment. If you want to see a video that talks a lot more about the exclusion zone itself, I'll pin that one in a comment down below. Mine be like if the Chernobyl disaster had never happened. Well, one obvious effect is that areas of Pripyat, Chernobyl, and other surrounding villages would continue to be inhabited by people. The Chernobyl exclusion at least officially not exist. The Soviet Union still falls. It was <laughs> really from far too many problems to stay afloat. However, it actually takes a lot. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't have, this wouldn't have saved the Soviet Union in this alternate timeline. The Chernobyl disaster affected the non-Russian people's relationship with the Soviet government. It opened to many eyes that the Moscow government would rather protect their own interests than the immediate health and safety of the people. The Chernobyl facility was directly run by the Soviet government. The government was responsible for the operation the overarching plans, Soviet the government, response, yeah. and notification of such an emergency, all of which were failed by the Soviets. The scale of the catastrophe was downplayed <laughs> was the thing that the happened. Soviet way, but consequences between the government's words and the effects led to more disillusionment and distrust among the people of Ukraine and other non-Russian countries. Chernobyl was not simply an environmental disaster, but perhaps was one of the many cracks that led to the Soviets collapsing just a few years later. Eh, it may have accelerated the process. It was a symbol of a bloated, dying communist government on its last legs. What about the future of nuclear energy? If the Chernobyl disaster never occurred in this alternate timeline, would we see nuclear power plants overtaking coal and natural gas? No. The Three Mile Island accident in the 70s- I was gonna say, I mean, you, you definitely see more of it, because a lot of people continue to bring up Chernobyl. The one thing I do want to I do want to address is, would we see another accident, like, instead of Chernobyl, that would be similar to Chernobyl, if, say, Chernobyl never happened? Now, again, that kind of depends on how you define this story and never happened, but I don't actually think so, because with Three Mile Island is the accident that led to a whole bunch of corrective actions, at least within the western part of the world, starting with the United States. There was additional monitoring equipment, advanced safety systems, designs, redundancies, even a whole new agency, the uh, Institute of Nuclear Power Operations, or INPO, was established. And it was all about promoting excellence in operations, far exceeding that of the federal government and the regulators' requirement. They regularly, to this day, do a bunch of site evaluations to ensure, and they score the plants on not just how safe they are, but how efficient, how their processes are. And it is so much next level using continuous improvement processes compared to any requirement that any government has. There's an international version of that, um, WANO, uh, World Association of Nuclear Operators, that extends it out to 
the rest of the world from the United States. And their audits and evaluations are so much more strict. Those are the ones that everyone in the plant senior leadership team gets nervous about. Because it's not just that your plant is adequately safe. It's that in terms of no accidents, uh, no significant operational events, uh, no safety events, it's these additional layers and even testing administrative barriers that exist on top of physical barriers to ensure absolutely every weakness is covered. And that was just Three Mile Island. The Soviets didn't comply for very Soviet reasons, and they didn't, they were not receptive to sharing lessons learned from all of the failures that resulted in the Three Mile Island accident in the US. But if we're ruling out Chernobyl and any Soviet nuclear disasters, then I don't think there's another super disaster that would have happened in lieu of Chernobyl. Sparked the first massive protests against nuclear energy in the fear of accidents. Nuclear now his statement about no, it won't replace coal and natural gas. I mean, I agree with that mainly because have having a diverse energy portfolio, especially back then, it wouldn't have led to a phase out. People didn't realize how bad coal and gas were for the environment in the 1980s compared to now. But I think by now in the 2020s, nuclear would have such a more significant percentage of the electricity mix. Power began to lose its appeal by the 80s. I'm not here to debate the positives and negatives in nuclear power or not. I am. What matters <laughs> in this alternate timeline is the public perception of it. Chernobyl was a public relations disaster for nuclear energy. The nuclear power growth was already slowing down by the mid 80s, but the disaster killed the building of many new plants. Italy voted against nuclear power in yeah. the year following Chernobyl. Chernobyl made plants from around the world analyze and improve their own safety protocols and take better measures to prevent any such occurrence from happening. In this alter A lot of that already was already implemented from from Three Mile Island though. The the improvements between that were done just from Chernobyl, like not from Three Mile Island, weren't as significant since a lot of the design problems and operational problems just simply didn't exist anywhere else. Timeline, even if Chernobyl never happened, there would be slightly more plants in this alternate timeline, as the fear from Chernobyl never leads to a dip in the growth of nuclear power. I will say there would be significantly more plants, like nuclear would eat up a lot of coal and natural gas's market share. This alternate timeline, the world never sees a catastrophic event like Chernobyl, as the disaster was a unique one. A combination of human error, design error, and Soviet corruption. Even Fukushima after the Japanese earthquake never reached the same radiation levels as Chernobyl, but that was simply because of the nature of the design. What do you think the world would be like if- Three Mile Island, you had bad operators, but a relatively good design for its time, and no radiological release. People forget that Three Mile Island, nobody died from Three Mile Island. Chernobyl, you had bad operators and a bad design, so we all know what happened there. Fukushima, it had good operators and again a relatively good design but a far beyond design basis event happened that ruined fukushima and i say relatively good they could have had additional backups and there were some things they could have done ahead of time such as relocating their emergency systems that would have prevented fukushima from being as bad as it was but Compared to Chernobyl, it was effectively nothing. Chernobyl never happened. So I think nuclear power would play a much bigger role. I think fear would have decayed faster, to use a nuclear engineering term. I mean, you're removing the worst ever disaster, so that's, as far as the whole public opinion thing, it would recover a lot faster. And we'd see a lot more nuclear power plants, which would be awesome. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.